everyone, Darren Rogers here with Atmosphere Entertainment Vallejo. And I am here with Vallejo's jazz saxophonist, Ron Burris. Ron, thanks for allowing this interview today. I know your schedule's kind of kind of busy, and I very much appreciate the time that you're taking to do this interview today. So um tell the folks how you got started or why it is that you are doing jazz? Uh, what is it that you really like about doing jazz? Well, I like jazz because it's an art form in which you can express yourself mm -hmm. by improvising, that is, uh, making up music on the spot over the chord changes. Although it's not totally made up because you practice a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a free expression and I just like jazz. I like other forms of music, mm -hmm. but jazz is my favorite form of expression. Okay, all right. Um, so um, now you played sports, you know, when you were when you were when you were in school. Yeah. And and you also did music, um, yeah. but you went to playing music over sports. Um, was that a conscious decision, or was like? <laughs> wasn't, you, know, oh. you know, a friend of mine asked me that question. Hey, Ron, I thought you were, you know, a really good football player. What happened to that? <laughs> well, in high school, I was uh, wanting to be a pro athlete, at least to go as far as I could. Mm -hmm. And then I got in a car accident oh, wow. my freshman year at Davis, oh. in which I broke this leg and chipped a piece of bone off my spinal column. Oh, my and now this, my left leg is actually a half inch shorter. Okay, wow. And so, yeah, that kind of ended my yeah, football <laughs> career. So then I just really got into my music, and I was a music major at UC Davis. I finished, got a music degree, and yeah. went into public schools and taught music. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you taught in, in, in public schools. Now, did that, and teaching in the public schools, did you say, you know, um, to yourself that I got to get back to the, to the playing form, not just being a teacher, but I want to play? Well, when I was uh, when I first started teaching, I uh, did play. I had a little jazz band. Okay. We would play on weekends right. and stuff. So I made a living playing music by teaching and playing on weekends. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Now, um, so your first, uh, uh, I heard one of the interviews that you did. You mentioned the fact that your first sax was a Selmar Mark VI. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do you? Do you have a Mark VI sax, or is it just a different type of sax? I still have a Selmer sax, but the sax I have is a Selmer uh, Series Three. Okay, all right. I traded my <laughs> one of my Mark VI in. I wish I would have kept it. Those instruments are worth a lot. Right. I, just because John Coltrane played a Mark VI. Oh, okay. That. All right. So John Coltrane would be one of your idols, to kind of like you yeah. know, say, you know, I'm following that. Now, is, does but it, let me make a comment about the Mark VI. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I was like, I think I was not quite high school, maybe junior high school. And so I asked my mom, if you play this horn, I'll be obedient, I'll do this. <laughs> and it was a kind of expensive, you know, yeah. horn for, yeah, for that day. It was like a professional horn. And she had confidence in me, and she mm -hmm. bought me that horn. Okay. And it was life-changing. I went and practiced, practiced, and I did stay out of a lot of trouble. I wasn't a perfect kid, but playing music and sports kept me out of a lot of trouble. Yeah, as as most people in sports will say that, yeah, yeah, I did it, to, you know, because of the fact of I wasn't going nowhere and this was to carry me over. Right, here. right. Not to say that that was your situation, but the keeping you the the baseline of all of it is it kept you out of trouble. It kept it, it kept you occupied to where you really couldn't get in trouble, probably. Right. Well, if you're doing <laughs> something positive, you don't have time to do something negative. negative. Exactly. <laughs> so, so that's good. Yeah. Um. So did you ever think? Okay, you you you're playing jazz um, locally uh, or around, mm -hmm. um, and you have this this CD out now, um, yeah. which is called Mr. Cool. Yeah. Okay, which I like that title. <laughs> I do like that title. Um, but in your in your time of playing jazz, um, then and now, was it ever in your mind to say I want to make a CD and do that as well. That's a, thank you for that question. Okay, so when I was a music major and after I graduated from college, uh, I had wrote some songs. Okay. So some of the songs on my CD 
uh, song for Tanya. I wrote that years ago with my daughter. She's over 49, she's a baby. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. I wrote Alto Samba years ago mm -hmm. and some other songs were more recent. Right. But I always said to myself, I would love to record these songs one day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got a chance to record them and I put all the songs. So I consider myself not only a saxophonist, mm -hmm. but a composer as well. Okay. Now, Mr. Cool is a nice title when people were saying to me, Oh, Rod, you think you're cool. I said, no, it's not that. <laughs> it's really dedicated to my brother, Clint Burris, who passed away. Okay. And people would call him Mr. Cool. Oh, okay. And right. so uh, the title cut, uh, one of the cuts, cut five, is entitled Mr. Cool, which I wrote for him in right. his honor. That's, oh, that, that, that's, yeah. that, that's good. That's, that shows a lot of love and respect for family. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. especially, you know, when you carry it on that way. Um, so okay, so how the uh, speaking of family, when you when you did this, when you made this CD, how did they, how did they how did the family feel about that? They felt good about it. They were proud that I dedicated to my brother, uh -huh. and they were happy to see me playing again. Yeah, that's good. Seriously, and then when they heard it, say, oh, they say, oh, you're serious? I say, yeah, I'm practicing again, trying to play, okay. and uh, they know how much I love music. Yeah, and so. I'm at a point in my life now instead of my wife, I just gotta play music. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a debate, it's right. just, I gotta play music now. <laughs> and, I, and I'm pretty sure your wife is, is, is very supportive. Very yeah. supportive, very supportive. You know, and, and that always helps. Um, although I don't think, even if it wasn't, I mean, it makes it easier, you know, when you have that support. But uh, you're pretty, you're pretty strong-willed in, in, in your convictions of, of a decision-making. So, when you say, when I say I got to play, that means it's like... <laughs> the discussion has begun. The discussion has <laughs> okay. All right. Now, this CD is, 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 is written and produced by you and arranged. Well, yeah, and I had uh, Wayne De La Cruz help me with some arrangements. He uh, wrote a nice little introduction to uh, Miss Lillian B. Okay. And he really worked uh, with us on the intros and stuff on the song, so I really give him credit. Okay. He also co-wrote Mr. Cool with me. Oh, all right. I had wow. part of the song, I said, Wayne, help me finish this song. He said, okay, <laughs> and he helped yeah. finish this. So he, I gave him credit. We both oh, wrote the okay. song. But again. the majority of it, pretty much, is, is the stuff that you've written. Yeah, 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 I wrote like six songs. From time back then and, 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 brought it, and brought it forward. I miss Carla B, is it to my other daughter. Uh -huh. Blues for Carla, that's written really recently. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. all right. Um, so, uh, now you're in the cusp of pretty much on a second CD. I'm on a second CD. I've gotten all my new material written mm -hmm. <clears throat> on this CD. I hope to do five songs. Uh, one song called uh, Let the Children Dance is going to be instrumental and vocal, like okay. I did with Miss Lillian B. And I've already got the lyrics written for that. Okay. And I got three other tunes, uh, Cruising with the Top Down, and Mr. JC, a okay. tribute to John Coltrane. Oh, all right. And I may even title the album Mr. JC, I'm not sure. And then I have a, a song called Sunset, you know, it reminds me of when you walk in the waterfront, mm -hmm. getting the exercise and it's dark and the sun's coming down. Yeah. So I wrote a sun, Sunset. Okay. All and right. so, but I want to do at least five cover tunes too on this, a little more cover tunes. Okay. But on every CD I do, I want to do also original song because I want to let the uh, world know I'm a composer as well as okay. a saxophone. Right. So, so it's, it's, it's almost sounding like a number three CD can be. Well, I got to get... <laughs> yeah, get number two going. Well, but... yeah, since I have to produce it myself and since I have to come up <laughs> with the funds and the yeah. desk and promote it myself, I want to get this out the way and then hopefully yeah. if a record company want me to do another one or... Yeah. Someone want to give me some assistance, I look for that down the road. But if not, I'm doing the CD to get some, uh, to get a buzz. Mm -hmm. But I'm also doing it because I want to do it. Yeah. Because I love music. And I told my children and my wife, I want to leave a legacy of music. And as a scholar, I wrote a couple books. Yeah, I, I, so I, I, wanna, I wanted to get into yeah. the book thing. Um, uh, how long, has, how long, now is it just one book or have you? written more than one. I've written two books. Okay, all right. I'm a church historian. Oh, okay. 
when I played music and I taught uh, music in the public schools for 10 years, I hit a point where I got tired of teaching in public school. Mm -hmm. And so I went into contracting, but I also got saved, got into the church, so to say. Because you're, you're a pastor. Right? I'm a pastor, yes. I'm a minister of the yes. gospel. And so what happened, I got excited about it, and I went to school to learn theology. Okay. And at one time I was studying Greek, Hebrew, wow. and everything. And I got a degree in uh, theology, and then I said, you know, I like to teach it. So I actually went back to school after eight years of work and got a PhD in church history. Okay. So I'm a church historian right. and theologian. So the book, does that kind of like reflect uh you, you, you yes, my the, yeah, your, right, your learnings right. in, in, in in religion. Right. right. Uh, okay. So both both the books. Uh, what are the both of the books. One of my books are uh, "Where's the Church." Okay. It has to do with the history of Christianity in North Africa, which okay. was my specialty. Okay. The second uh, book is called "Wisdom from Africa," and it deals with Saint Augustine, who was an African. His book called "A Confession." He wrote a book called "The Confessions," mm -hmm. and when I teach a class on Augustine. I noticed that some of my students were having a problem understanding some of his thoughts. So I wrote a book to help them understand his confession. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. So it's kind of like you put out a book and then you make a book that helps teach about the book that you first put out. Yeah, as a that's, scholar, that's you do very, that. Yeah, that's very good. Um, so where can you find the books? You can find the books on Amazon. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're available. Okay. As well as? As, as well as my CD, CD Amazon. CD. Also, I got it set up where you can go Ron Burris dot here now, Ron Burris dot here now dot com, something okay. like that. I got right. that. Okay, set up. all right, okay. That, 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 that's good. So that way I can post that up for the fans to see it. They can go right to it. Now, can they purchase online? Yeah, they can purchase online. They can download one CD, one, I mean, one cut, uh -huh. or they can buy the CD or, okay. oh, all right. you know, so, order. So, so, so there's a variety of ways to get something, and I highly recommend uh, the Mr. Cool CD. I have a copy. Well, so thank you very can, much. <laughs> yes, and I do enjoy that CD. So, so yes, for, for your fans or, or fans of the new, yes, look into Ron Burr's Mr. Cool CD. That's available now on Amazon, I believe also on YouTube. Uh, yes. you, can, you can also see it. You can also see it on YouTube and purchase it. You know, help a brother out if you can. Purchase the CD. I appreciate that. <laughs> and you know, some of my friends in Valle who who purchased my CD, I asked them, "Tell me what do you think of it? Tell me what songs you like." And I got a lot of positive feedback. Yeah, it is. It, it is a very up up upbeat up yeah. tempo uh, yeah. CD. And uh, now you did this in an open recording, which is kind of strange. A lot of artists won't do that, but. Finances, we'll do. We'll, we'll, I'll look at it like that. We can kind of like dictate how you want to do the recording. Well, see, as a jazz recording, I wanted to do live music with real musicians. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do mixes and stuff, which I'm not against right. the high technology and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to do where I had musicians come in there and we play my cuts and then we feed off the energy of one another. Right. That doesn't mean that you can't go back in the studio and redo this or that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's a live recording of cats playing music. Yeah, and, and, and the, recording was, the, the recording was done well. Um, you don't really hear any open flaws, um, which, is, well, which, is, which, is, which is good. Uh, but then again, you guys rehearsed before you went to the studio and, right. and you put that time in. But the, you used the same individuals for the rehearsals that you did when you did your live performances. Did that make the transition from that to the studio easier? Well, not quite. See, what happens when you play gigs now, they don't pay enough, so I generally have a four-piece band quartet. Right. Yeah. And so, but when I did the studio, I wanted to have a bigger sound, so I had a piano player and a conga player. Okay. Percussion, so I had six-piece. Oh, okay. When I go back into the studio, I want a six-piece because I want the big sound. <laughs> okay. But when, if I get gigs, I only have four pieces. Now, if I can uh, take my game up a notch and get mm -hmm. at some festivals, right. I like to have five or six pieces and hopefully Which I can get paid for them. Need because, uh, to I've get the to sound that I want. Yeah, I've been to festivals, uh, not the jazz festivals, but I've looked at a lot of festivals, you know, even online and some that I've attended. Yeah. And they have uh, a lot of pieces up there. Yeah. You can, you can get away with four pieces, but if you're not structured, I guess. Well, it's the sound. It's the sound you want. Like yeah. for instance, you don't have to have a Congo player, but I like Congos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I like that beat that they give and the percussion player is a good congo player. Yeah. I like guitar player, but I also like to have a guitar and piano. Right. Because I like the sound, you yeah. know, so. Um, we talked, we have talked about this before, uh, even before we decided to do this interview here, um, that you had a, I won't say a fascination, but you wanted a stand-up bass. It was a stand-up bass, kind of like one of those decisions Up where right, I'm yeah. going to have a stand-up bass. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what is it about the stand-up bass? Uh, so let me say this, when I started back playing music, uh -huh. I was playing guys that want to play smooth jazz and kind of, you know. Yeah, okay, yeah. And so I had to finally give with some cats that were playing <laughs> jazz like I wanted to play. Right. And then I had to find a ba upright bass player <laughs> okay. because it gives you the sound, a different sound yeah. than electric bass, which I love the electric bass. Mm -hmm. But the upright bass and you're walking, it just has a different uh, a sound. Different. And it's a different on, feel. Yeah, it takes you to a different area. Yeah, and so I would like an upright yeah. bass player, which I have now. A couple yeah. guys I know. Now, you have an up there, yeah, okay, so, but do you also have an electric bass player, or, or can they switch from upright to, to electric? Yeah, most upright bass players can play electric. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, okay. Yeah. So, so, so that, that, helped, that helped that out a lot. Um, so, now, so we pretty much done talked over most of the stuff. Um, but your mom was, a, was I think, a deep influence for you as far as getting back into jazz as well, correct? Yeah, my mother was, you know, I just, I love my mother because uh, she supported all of her children, you know, 100%. And the way I got back into jazz, I forgot if it was her 80th birthday or whatever, 75th, whatever. But they had a party at my brother's house, John Burris. And she said, right, I want you to play uh, Sugar from me at a party, which is, I said, Mom, do you remember that song? Because I played it years ago. And she started humming it to me, Stanley Turnstein Sugar. I said, really? So I said, okay, I'll play it. And uh, my brother had John Turk playing the piano on this, and he would hire John Turk all the time. And so sure enough, I played uh, Sugar, and John Turk looked at me and said, you need to get the rust off that horn. <laughs> In other words, you sound okay, but you know, oh, yeah, you need to practice. Yeah, and I said, you know what? I think I am. Yeah. And so I started practicing and I said, I need to play my music. And so I laughed at myself sometimes when I went, I said, I wonder if my mother knew I needed to play music and yeah. set me up, you know. Hey, Ron, play the song at my, to get me back going, because you know, I was run, uh, running a family business. I was doing stuff. So it was a lot of stress in my life. Yeah. And so that music helped uh, bring a lot of joy to me. And I hope it helps me bring joy to other people. I think it does. Yeah. I, I have music for a lot of people. Uh, jazz, jazz especially, does bring a lot of joy, joy to a lot of folks. You know, and, and so, yeah, that's just how it, that's just how it works. So I always tell people, I'm playing music to be happy and to make people happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I wouldn't mind making some money doing it too, but the yeah. first goal, to be happy myself and to make people happy. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Now, Gene, you met a gentleman way back in the day, I would say, uh, Gene Ammons? Yes. Gene. Yeah. And so Gene Ammons is a famous saxophone player that goes way back to even doing Parker Day. And, uh, but he kept playing. He did like eight years in prison for drugs in Chicago, oh, wow. okay. for heroin. Okay. But anyway, he came back and he had a song called The Boss Is Back. And Jake Webster, this trumpet player, said, hey man, this is an album called The Boss Is Back. This really good uh, saxophone player. And it was Gene Adams. I never did. <laughs> and I was in college. And I heard that horn. I said, oh man. He played a couple ballads, didn't we? And the tone he had on the saxophone. Because Gene Ammons was a really big guy. He had so much wind. Uh -huh. And then I was able to meet him in uh, Keystone Corner in Vallejo. Oh, okay. Several right. times. Right. And he was such a nice guy. Yeah. Such a nice guy. And I really appreciate. So he was my early hero on the saxophone. Because when he played, he played with such feeling. Everybody in the room was just like mesmerized. He was just a, he was a good player. So that was my early influence. And then, of course, after that, Coltrane, Sonny Rollins, you know, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All the masters, yeah, Sonny Stan. Yeah. Um, you yeah. were able to 
uh, be an opening act for Ronnie Laws at one time. Uh, what was that? What was that experience like? Uh, being an opening act. I mean, I mean, yeah, for you. So it was. Um, I forgot the lady's name, Dina, Danita. She was doing a fundraiser for some children in uh, Sacramento. Okay. And one of the guys that was doing, I think he knew Ronnie Law. So he was able to get Ronnie Law. Okay. So she asked me to be a part of the program because she heard me play. I heard that I could play, and then she came to hear me play. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I said to her, I said, well, come hear me play so you will see what if you like the kind of jazz. And I said, it's not smooth jazz, mm -hmm. but we play jazz right. smoothly, yeah. you know, and we <laughs> laughed about that. And she said, oh, I like your sound. Okay. And so we weren't less in the, yeah, we played before, but there was other acts on the show. But I met Ronnie Laws. Mm -hmm. I met his son. He, he's just a very nice person. Yeah. And so I considered it an honor to be able to do that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I gained some experience and hope to do some more shows like that. <laughs> okay. Now... Where can they, where can they, how can they find you if somebody, if, a, if somebody wants to book you for a show? Well, I, uh, my phone number is 707-712-8267. Also, I got a, a Facebook, I have a uh, website, mm -hmm. Ronald Burris Jazz. Okay. You can look me up on my website. You can call me and uh, I would love to play for you. I've played for weddings. I've played for... I even did a show for Lenny Williams, you know, Lenny Williams came to Vallejo, mm -hmm. great, you know, used to be with Tower Power, and we were asked to do like a short set, 30 minutes, right. and I also met Lenny Williams, I said, Lenny, thank you for letting me play before your set, and I let everybody know, we're not, we're just trying to open up, Right. so it worked out nice, playing a little jazz, by people getting seated, getting organized, yeah. and then we get off the stage and let him do his thing. Okay. And he put on a wonderful show. I mean, he went like two hours straight. Oh, wow. People were really happy. Uh -huh. And I was happy that he allowed us to be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. How so, long, how, basically, how long do, do your show when you, when you are doing your live sets? Whatever. You know, I'd like to play like 45 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. But if I, you know, in 15 minutes off when we have to do three sets. Right. Oh, okay. I mean, I wouldn't mind going to Yoshi's and doing a 90 minute set, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> so, whatever calls for. Okay. Well, Ron, thank you very much once again for allowing me to for this interview. Okay? And thank you. And, and you're welcome. And look forward to talking with you again. And for those of you who can't remember, uh, the latest CD is called Ron Burst, Mr. Cool, Mr. Cool, which you can get on on Amazon and YouTube. Like I say, help a brother out. Purchase the CD when you see it, whether it's a single or the album. Personally, I think you should just buy the album. Yeah, it is a good album. And so, looking forward to doing this again. Until then, this is Darren Rogers from Atmosphere Entertainment with Ron Burris, Vallejo jazz artist Ron Burris. And I'll, we'll be talking with somebody or we'll be talking with you again soon. Thank you very much. And Thank have you. a good day.